older guy. Mr. Older guy? Well, really, he should be Mr. Old guy. He could have mowed his yard three days ago, and then I get around to mowing mine. Literally. He races out to mow his? Sometimes he'll, even while I'm still mowing, he'll start mowing. Do you think it's like a, he is better than you, and his yard has to reflect it? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I've dealt, I've, in other neighborhoods that I've lived in, the, the older generation, man, like they. They're serious about their landscaping? Yes. And they um, don't want a young buck to look better than them. I'll, I'll say this. Old people do love grass. Willie Nelson does. I, not that kind of grass. Oh. I'm all about that. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two guys one podcast i am the lowest common denominator what do you want i lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show <laughs> two guys one podcast tell okay. me that it doesn't sound a little delicious maybe oh i don't want to hear it <laughs> you picture jr ewing while you're having sex i don't do anything but talk two guys one podcast and this is the podcast Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. <laughs> and this is the podcast. I never... I never Attack it with vigor, sir. I feel like you have, you have to start the... Sh- like, how you start is how the rest of the show is going to go, man. Go big or go home. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Today is the first day of school for son number one. Or was the first like day. Big kid, like big kid school. Well, you know, he didn't start high school or anything. Uh, no, yeah, but, he's preschooler. But but oh, public preschool school. doesn't count. Public school. That Real, doesn't count. Whatever. I think I to me the the like the dividing line was that he entered the public school system. You know, he is now. Dude, the dividing line is when he goes to kindergarten. Why is that? Why kindergarten is pre? Because he didn't go to school. He went to preschool. Hence, before school, it's in the fucking name. Like it's not that hard. Maybe. He is the age now that I was when I started kindergarten. But he's not in kindergarten. Uh, yes, but what I'm saying, the curriculum for – so what happens now in pre-K is what used to happen in kindergarten, I think. You slept and colored and glued stuff together in kindergarten. I mean, you could do that when you were three. The education between three and five is all very much the same. You know what he came home today doing? He was singing a song. He said, Daddy, I learned a new song in school today, in my new school. And I said, Okay. A dot, a dot, a dot will do anymore, anymore is too much glue. <laughs> oh, that's funny, yeah. <laughs> he sang it like six or seven times. Like it was like a real discovery. I got to tell you, though. His glue skills already improved. Well, no, I'm, but like, okay, so he, he, this one day of him going there and that little interaction and then the little interaction, I've met his teacher now twice, like leading up to this, I'm really impressed with the way that they've codified how to establish societal norms in these kids. Did you say codified? Yeah. I don't, it, know that, I don't know that word. I know a codified. Do you pronounce it codified? Is this another, did I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable? I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong too, but do you mean, do you mean that they've put it in an yes, order? Yes, put it into an order, made, it, made a set of rules Yeah, I think it's practices. codified. Codified? Maybe so. I thought it was codified. Mm. Codified makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's it codified. Code. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> now that's I feel, embarrassing. Now I feel sheepish. Yes. Uh, they've codified. Okay. See, it even, even sounded better mm, already. Maybe so. All right. <laughs> They'll, trust me. If I'm right on this, I will let you know next week. <laughs> so, but they've codified like how to make you, – you and I have talked about it before. I mean, my kids are wonderful, of course, but children in yeah. general are little little monsters. They're little Hitlers, man. Like they all they all they know is the id. They it's just what I want. I just want to eat and shit, and you're in my way. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what I want. That's what. Yes, I'm saying that's the that's the animal. Let me eat and shit and leave me alone. Right. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the a lizard. perfect day. <laughs> That's the what's what the lizard brain says, right? So that's what that's what that's that's the back of the skull. What we want is to share our toys, and we want like no, we don't, we don't nicely. want we we don't want that. We have to do that. We don't want to do it. I'm saying society. That's what society wants us to do. That's oh, what don't we, let me don't let me in, into that. Okay, well, I'm saying it as it's what you want other individuals to do, though, right? You don't want people in your life running around like punching you in the face and taking what's yours. No, but also you you want to do that. We may be we may be neighbors, but I don't know you, you know, do, so don't come knock on my door, leave me alone. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough. But if there's a pile of things in the middle of yours in his yard, and there's a big sign that says this is our stuff. 
you don't want him to come and take it all away from you, right? Like you want to be able to come and I'm not sharing a, stuff. What what is our? I'm not sharing stuff. Let's with say him. there's a communal pile of firewood. Let's say that there's a that there's a lot. No, there's of, not. Because if there was, what would happen is if two of us are sharing it, I would have divided it. You take your shit. I'm gonna take mine. Now don't come asking for no more. <laughs> You count it all up. One Done. for you, one for me. I might do it by one, poundage, okay. really. All right, fair enough. But my point is, society wants you to do those things. Yeah. And it's, they figured out how to do it. They figured out how to make people more, or they figured out at least how to teach you that there is a reward if you do fall in line, and there are severe consequences if you don't. I don't know if there's so much reward for being in line as there's more punishment for being out of line. There's at least some reward. I, for instance, there's a gumball at the end of every school day if you're not on red. I'm talking about yeah. You know, what about what about the kid that can't have the gumball? Uh, there are alternative prizes. If you don't like, if they don't like hard candy, there's a soft candy. If they don't like candy at all, or the parent doesn't want them to have sweets, there's an alternative. Yeah, because we do, to that. There's like a sticker. Or n- something. Dude, that's bullshit. I I hate that shit. I fucking hate it. I hate you people getting answer- rewarded for shit they should just do. Like that just pisses me off. Okay, but my but my point is when you're four, you don't know that yeah, you're supposed to. But guess to what be happens? Good. But guess what happens? When you're five, you still expect that reward. When you're six, you still expect that award. When you're fucking sixteen, you still expect that reward. Yeah, but you amp up the required it's what you do with a monkey when you teach a monkey how to solve a maze or something or when you teach a mouse how to solve a maze and they get the cheese you make the maze harder that's what you do with kids too at first all you have to do is not shit in your pants and not hit the other children and you get a gumball no fuck and then, that you, and then at the no, end of no, the year no, no. you you don't get anything for doing the right thing fuck that if you hit a kid, you get spanked. Are you nil on rice? Are you hold a penny to the wall? And I if believe, it drops, then you get time beat. Out. I believe time out is generally the first. That's not. How creative are you? Time out. Time <laughs> anyway, out for the first offense. Yes. Like if you get caught with HGH or some kind of PED, like your 50 game suspension. That'd be awesome. Yes. No, fuck that. If you get caught doing something wrong, you don't get nap time. Make that kid stay up 48 hours. That's what they really think they want to do. Once they do it once or twice, they'll never ask to stay up again. They'll be fucking delirious. You're ridiculous my point is they've they've got it down and they really are like squeezing the knowledge in through the ear holes i'm very impressed i'm very impressed i'm excited to see how fast the kid grows now no that shouldn't impress you because now there's going to be an expectation that that kid has whenever they come home to you daddy look i pooped in the potty where's my candy (laughs) you don't give the kid the candy look daddy i shit in your pillowcase Where's my candy? You're saying the behavior's going to go down now yeah. because they're because of, because of the welfare state. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> I'm gonna. It's gonna. I'm gonna. It, this is gonna be a cuss heavy show. That's all right. It always because you're drinking. Yeah, this is a drinking show. Spoiler alert. Spo- <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got some listener mail. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. You don't even remember what the you don't even remember what the sounder is, do you? <laughs> no. It's Sims it's Homer, I think. Jamail! Jamail is here! Ooh. I mean it's not Homer, it's Homer. Who sounds very similar to Homer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not trademark. Um Honey Bun sent That's uh, not really listener mail. Well, she sent me an email with her childhood crush. Ooh. We, we asked oh yeah, for, I want to hear we who? asked for women. Can I guess? Story. Can I guess? Sure. Uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I, you know, I said everybody that's our age, girls our age, are all going to say JTT. Jonathan she Brandes. Said, she said JTT was was fine. She she did like Jonathan Brandes also, but that it, that wasn't her guy. Devin Sawa was mm. way better. Uh, Casper. Yes, indeed. And he was in a JTT movie. Was he really? Yeah, they were like. Uh, I don't know, fucking in the woods or something. Not, not they weren't fucking. They weren't. <laughs> That's not what happened. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that neither one of those guys ever made that they were, movie. They, they were, they were in the woods. They were in the woods doing things. Not those things, <laughs> right? I follow you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> so is Devin Sawa, apparently. She said all of those guys were great. So Devin Sawa was really her guy as far as like similar age. But, you know, like I went Kathy Ireland and you were talking about Phoebe, uh, Phoebe Cates. Oh, um, man. She says the, the the guy that awakened her womanhood was Jason Priestley. And I, get, I, was I like, get that. I was like, hmm, Jason Priestley was or your- Or Ian, who, who, who was all on 
that show back in the day. Oh, there was a there was a bunch of motherfuckers. We talked at length about nine hundred two one zero for a while, actually, and then Melrose Place too. Because here's the deal: I, I was like, really, Jason Priestley was your childhood crush? Luke Perry, of course, was the other main guy on there. Um, and uh, she said, well, it's not really a childhood crush. It was more like a, a teenager crush. And I was like, I don't think so. I was, I was pretty young when nine hundred two one zero was out, and you're younger than me. So we looked it up. She looked it up. 90210 hit in 94, or at okay. least that's when it became like the number one rated show All or right. whatever. Yeah. Apparently her womanhood got awoken by Jason Priestley at the age of eight. <laughs> no, 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 no. How long did the show run? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, if it ran for four, four years, years, four or five like years, that. she catches it in she's your four. Slowly warmed, she slowly blossomed. Yeah, yeah in, she catches it in your face, four. She's 12. Basking in the glow of Jason Priestley for for her young ladyhood. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have another... Uh, listener email oh oh my bad yeah i didn't give you room uh we heard from that guy yeah that guy so he uh he hit us back with two things one is his top three celebrity confidants all right and then who it was that uh what star awakened his boyhood sexuality nice all right let's hear the uh, celeb confidants all right so the celeb confidants he would pick his number three robert kennedy so he can tell me all the shit his big brother did. <laughs> uh, Why not just pick JFK? That's a yeah, that's a waste of I a pick. Want, uh, although, well, I I think I get his reasoning. Bobby had plenty going on too. I mean, Bobby slept around a lot. Bobby knew all the movie stars. Bobby dealt with the gangsters some. Bobby was a powerful man in his own right. And it makes because that guy kind of looks like he could be a Kennedy. A little bit. Yeah. He definitely purports himself like a Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of carries himself like a Kennedy. Uh, the second one I really liked, and I liked his reasoning for it too, Louis C.K. That's a good one. Because if that's the stuff he can talk about on his shows, imagine what he doesn't talk about. Oh. Oh, because he, he talks about he talks about wanting to beat up little kids. Yeah, you got to think that, that. And, you know, the, the, the terrible things that you think of when you're taking a shit in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, like how bad you feel right after you masturbate. Like if you have a bad day, he calls you up, your day's better already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought that a was good, a good one. I don't think his number one is a good one. I I think he's got an all right reason behind it. Okay. His number one is Carson Daly. Yeah, it's that's what I say about that. Carson Daly's like my least favorite person in Hollywood. Right, right. And he, I think he knows that pretty much everybody hates Carson Daly. So he would want Carson Daly just to bitch about getting phone calls from Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> he's like we're all talking and and he's the, his phone rings looks down it's like ah fucking carson jesus what the fuck does he want what is it daily <laughs> yeah would you just, fuck up now he's just pissed like quietly you're mouthing to your friend this asshat doesn't get off the phone ever yeah yeah no life that's pretty funny i feel bad for him because his dick's so small it's yeah i don't know how to get rid of vd yeah. what, do, what do i tell him guys <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a crappy one to pick, but he's got a good reasoning for that's it. That's an excellent reason. That's that's really good uh that's really good justification for it. All right, who's his who's his celeb hottie? Um who turned on the sexuality of that guy? So he's he's I thought that there's a whole lot of sexuality <laughs> there going on. He's boo. He's uh so he's younger than us. Yeah. You have to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh he picked He says Miley Cyrus. No, no, no. Beat him the no, fuck up. No, 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 right. no, no, no. He's not that young. He's not that young. That's what I was no, gonna no, no. say. Uh, he picked Amy Jo Johnson. Amy Jo Johnson. You don't have a fucking clue who that is, do you? I really don't. I didn't either. Who the fuck is it? The Pink Power Ranger. No way. Yes. What? Yeah. And I thought, because I thought the same thing, but then I realized I'm I'm older than he is, and that would be like Tiffany Amber Thiessen for us. I don't know that it was Tiffany. I mean, I'm I'm looking her up right now. Amy, I'm I'm breaking the. Well, I'll tell you this. When J-O. I typed Amy J, yeah. Amy Jo Johnson was the very first thing that yeah, popped yeah, yeah. up. Google Imager, man. Okay, no, wait a minute. She, she's she gone on to do some other things, right? I don't think anything bigger than the Power Rangers. Than the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. She's kind of mannish looking here. Maybe he likes his ladies mannish. She was in Flashpoint. Never heard of it. Uh, it's a movie from 2008. Oh, yeah. Still never heard of it. <laughs> I wonder if he knows. Yeah, we should just start. Her we, should, up. we should just start bombarding this guy with with films or TV shows that she's been in, just to see if he figures it out. Uh, I thought of another one uh, today. Actually, I I saw 
a uh, a picture of her online. Um, Tamra Jacobs was the character's name. Did you watch Dawson's Creek when you were in high school? Uh, not really. Like, like I know the three of the characters from Dawson Creek. Yeah, you know Dawson, Pacey, and Joey. Yeah, that's it. That's on. Yeah. Okay. Tamara Jacobs was the uh, was the teacher that Pacey had an affair with in the first season. No, does not ring any bell? Uh, I can't think of the actress's name, but anyway, I, I, I'm going to add her to the list. Too and here's, on our what, here's what's even page. bad about it: I can name all the actors' real name. I couldn't have given you Pacey or Joey. Oh, nice. But I knew James Vanderbeek was Dawson, right? And I know it was Joshua Jackson and. Katie, Katie Holmes. Holmes. Yeah. All three of them have gone on to fairly successful careers after Dawson's Creek. Generally, uh Really? Well, I mean, they're all still working. They're all still getting paid. Really? I, I bet their bank accounts are both more positive than yours and mine. That's that's all I'm saying. So is a strippers. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so we'll add those two celebrity hotties to our Facebook wall. You can check that out, Facebook.com slash two guys one pod. And, uh, slash semicolon squiggle hotties. Don't confuse them. <laughs> Just go to facebook.com slash two guys, one pod. All all written out, no numbers in that, by the way. Hey, you sent me some news. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but you. But I wish I hadn't. Why? Because we've kind of talked about it a little bit, and I like my version in my head. I'm not saying I really read the article. <laughs> oh, you just read the headline. I just read the headline. <laughs> That's all right. The headline gives you plenty here. Yeah, and then I made up my own story, and then you completely shot it down. And headline. This is from Fox News. We'll have links on the Tumblr page. Two yeah, guys. I, don't have, I don't have time. To, I have time in my day to read headlines. I don't have time to read articles. Twoguysonepod.com for more details. Delaware daycare workers accused of running toddler fight club. Yeah, that's pretty sensational. That's a that's a fantastic headline. Here's let me here's the text message you sent this with me. By the way, I thought this was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Don't these bitches know the first rule? Question <laughs> mark. And then you posted the link. Yeah, yeah. Um, three ladies are involved. The article begins. Somebody talked about Fight Club. <laughs> Three Delaware daycare employees have been accused of encouraging toddlers to fight each other while the children were under their care. That sounds awesome. CBS Philly reported that Tiana Harris, 19, Lisa Parker, 47, and Estefania Myers, 21, employees of the Hands of Our Future Daycare in Dover, were arrested after a cell phone video emerged of them allegedly encouraging two three-year-olds to fight in an organized battle. In my head, like I pictured it like... uh they were sending like you could get you could pay for the link right and watch them and then like there could be like bet like you're betting on the side like they like they like they have it set up like the 19 year olds the announcer right and she's like and next up in the right corner wearing the Superman underoos Jacoby standing at 27 inches and 14 pounds. Uh. Police said in in the video, one child is heard yelling, he's pinching me. A daycare worker Who pinches? allegedly responded, no pinching, only punching. <laughs> <laughs> what about kicking and biting? Let me tell you, I think no pinching, only punching might could become the new subtitle of this podcast. <laughs> I want I want a t-shirt, no pinching, only punching. <laughs> no pinching, only punching. And it would Tyler have a donkey on it. Why? Oh, it would have a donkey on the back? Yeah. No pinching, only punching. That changes it all together. Yeah, because you can be like, you know, don't pinch the fight don't, club. Like, like, I, I don't appreciate it when you pinch my ass. Right. But I'll take a good donkey punch. I'll take a good donkey punch. <laughs> Who really wants... Nobody asked for a... What is a good donkey punch? No, there is no such thing when as When they good, don't remember. That's pretty obvious. It was a difficult video to watch, Dover Police Captain Tim Stump told FoxNews.com. One Only of the if kids you lost. Involved. Only if you lost. Is that a difficult video to watch? One of the kids involved ran over to one of the adults for protection, but she turned him around back into the fight. The video take the Two men enter! <laughs> one man leave! <laughs> the video was taken in March, Stump said. Two of the suspects could be seen encouraging the fight while the other filmed it. With her cell phone camera. Look, 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 look. If you, if you're caught on video encouraging the fight, and and you're filming it, you're no longer a suspect. You're a criminal. 
Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. I think, well, here's, we have to assume innocence until the, the guilt is proven. Maybe the video footage is doctored. Maybe it's not really them. Maybe it's not quite so clear that it's them. <laughs> Except that there are only three I'll ladies. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what if, it was, if it was you're guilty and you have to prove yourself innocent, crime rate would go down. It wasn't me. It was the one armed man. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not true. If it was, uh, think about it like this if it was guilty until proven innocent, then everyone that is currently guilty would already be in jail. And a lot of the people that had gotten off would also be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying it's only them that are getting out and committing crimes, and we just lock them all up? Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying if you if you you're taking some hard lines, not, here if today. you put yourself in a situation to where you where you could be in court for doing wrong, there's no way you should put yourself in that situation if you're if you're not doing wrong. That's easy to say until you get arrested. Like, it's easy to say, well, I'm sure if you're suspected, then you're probably guilty. Until you're suspected. Yeah, but I, I think that if I was guilty, I, I could prove myself innocent. So you're not worried proving about Proving innocence is way easier than proving guilt, man. Okay, well, like, okay, but what if you're, okay, you said if you're guilty and you think you could prove you're innocent. What if you were innocent and someone just suspected you and accused you? Right, no, what I'm saying is, if I was on trial... Right. And everybody thought I was guilty, but I didn't do it. I think I I could prove my innocence. You're also a straight Protestant white man, though. So, you know, the scales of justice I'm Irish. slightly tilted in your degree. Hey, Irish doesn't hurt, though, these days. Yeah, not these days. There aren't any more signs. Thanks, Boondock ago, Saints. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. It'd be quite a different thing. Yeah, you shoot enough Italian mobsters <laughs> in the head, you get some fucking respect around this joint. Sean Patrick Flannery's done a lot for my people. <laughs> That's the Chicago way. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, we've made light of it. Here's the good news. Uh, Stump said a full investigation is underway. Well, thank God that they're looking into it, right? Um, there's no evidence yet to suggest, and you were a little let down by this, there's no evidence to suggest that these fights occurred more than once. There's no evidence to suggest that it didn't, so I'm going to keep it. I'm <laughs> In your heart. Yeah, I feel like, I was, I feel like there You're was... You're going to keep Toddler Fight Club alive. Oh, yeah. Like, imagine how that... Like, like, it does wonders for a kid who wins his first fight. If you win your first fight at two, life's going to be a lot easier for you. Now, if you're the other kid, life you just get ready. Your life's going to suck. On the flip side, what if you what if you do real harm to a kid at two? Like, aren't you haunted by the... No, I'm two. He's two. He's a weak motherfucker. If, I, if my two-year-old ass can do serious harm to his two-year-old ass, then I don't... What do I... It's a fair fight, man. I'm Hell, real, let's put it in weight classes. I'm, I'm real glad you're my friend. 13 kilograms, you know? <laughs> um, it None of the children were seriously injured. That's, That's good. That's the really good news. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, happy with that. The three women have been charged with assault, endangering the welfare of a child, and reckless endangering and conspiracy. So, I'm, I'm okay with them getting charged with all that. Let me tell you my favorite part about that article. Is that they had to say a full investigation as if they would do a half investigation? No. Uh, it's that it took place in Delaware, which is a long-ass way away from here. Like, that's... I kind of thought to myself, oh, shit, this is right down the street. There's a lot of terrible things that happen in the South. Yeah, you know? but we don't... But our children don't beat children. We beat our own children. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need other kids to do it for us. Family members beating, beating their own kids. They don't, they don't shove the kids against yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But, I mean, that's... It's smart. It's more industrious. I mean, the North got, I think the North has this one right. Don't beat your own kid. Just have a play date. News from the outside world. Yep. And it's horrible because I'm looking up the Urban Dictionary word of the day. Yeah. And so I know I just got a text message from my wife. Uh-huh. And I go to wake up my phone. And I know it's from her. But what's on my phone is slag. I just thought it was ironic. That's funny. Is slag going to be the Urban Dictionary word yeah, of the day? Yeah, I think, I think it is. All right. Check your text message if you need to. And just then, did. Not important. Excellent. Give us the UrbanDictionary.com word of the day. <clears throat> slag. S-L-A-G. 
An individual who cares not for relationships beyond the realm of sexual. These people sleep with many partners, not caring about anything, save for the moment of climax. Ooh, I also like this one. I think this one's much more descriptive. Still slag, just a different definition. Kind of the same thing. Usually used in reference to a lady who has a revolving door to her bedroom. Though less common, slag may also be applied to males who spread their seed too thinly and on bad soil. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> on bad spread soil. Spread yourself too thinly. <laughs> I don't care that you're sleeping around, soil. just don't do it with whores. <laughs> yeah. Look, man. If you're going to catch VD, catch it from something classy, all right? Yeah. <laughs> not, not, the, not the stripper next door. All right. Let's see if we can't fit that one in. Um, we were discussing some news. Uh, <laughs> Avril Lavigne's engaged. Avril? Yeah, that's it. A wonderful man. <clears throat> Chad Kroger of the Nickelback. That's going to last. They're both Canadians, which I had forgotten that she was Canadian. I'd forgotten really about her, if I'm honest. She's not now. She's is she the one that got in trouble for lip syncing on on Saturday Night Live? I think a couple people did, but the one you're thinking about could be the Simpson kid. Yeah, Ashley Simpson. There did you go. That. She where she just danced around. So Avril Lavigne, what is she famous for? Uh, Skater Boys. Oh yeah, she's the. And she's she was the, dating the guy from Some Forty One. Yeah, she's the she's the punk of the little pop girls right she's the punky one she's a pop punk kid you texted me right that they were getting engaged Was i did you? not no somebody did i can't believe you dragged my name through the mud like that my bad here's my first thought if they're engaged i'm assuming they're gonna have a child really yeah if not now then some point dude celebrities do don't have get- kids they adopt them that's not true. They have their own two. Even Brad and Angie have like three of their own. After seven of other people's. They had one of their own pretty early. Like the second or third was one of their own, I think. Well, she had two uh, I hope this, they is, I hope this is going somewhere. Anyway, yeah. What okay. My point is this. I don't think they should be allowed to procreate. Why not? Avril Lavigne okay. and the lead singer of Nickelback. Yep. The two of them together is going to make the rock and roll antichrist. Like it's, it's the... It's going to be the, it'll be the anti Elvis. The Sliv. <laughs> is that how, is that how you pronounce Elvis backwards? Yeah, he'll have Sliv. Sliv. Like, he'll have Sliv in a birthmark somewhere on his body. But it's Elvis's head upside down. Yeah. Or maybe like on his like, right buck cheek. Or it could be a girl. It doesn't have to be a guy, I don't think. I suppose I think so, it'd have to be a girl. anti Elvis. Yeah, it'd have to be a girl. Sliv. That's a horrible girl name. Hmm. Slive. Slive. Slive's not bad. <laughs> For a girl? It's horrible. A rock star. Who the would name the kid? Star. Who would name the kid Slive? If you're having a baby right now, anybody out there listening, and you name your kid Slive and <laughs> send me a copy of the birth certificate, I would I will give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> there you go, hundred dollars to name your kid Slive on the board, to which name is Elvis child Slive. Elvis backwards. What if I rename one of my boys Slive? You're <laughs> fucking retarded. You wouldn't do it. No, I, wouldn't do it. I don't think the ex would let me. I. So you don't have hate for these two? I'm, no. I am not looking Here, forward here's to this. The, here's the, I was thinking about this. They're both so, such they're, it's black holes. Black so, holes of music. So here's something that I was thinking about uh, while I was watching uh, Newsroom. Okay. I don't get angry about a lot of things. A lot of things don't bother me. Oh, you mean you don't get indignant about a lot of things? Sure. Things don't like I don't. You don't. I don't care if they get. Horse. I don't care if they have fucking twelve kids. I don't care. Uh, and likewise, you don't care if gay people get married. Nope. And if they legalize marijuana, nope, don't care. Uh, you, you you don't really care about like an expansion of like abortion options or whatever, like women's rights. You're like, hey, it's not really any of my business, is yep. it? <laughs> yeah, um, but not just like the quote unquote controversial political issues. You mostly don't care what we eat for dinner tonight. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> or what movie we watch. Nope. Because <laughs> you're gonna have a good time no matter what. Or I'll just go to bed. I mean, yeah, like if we hang out, if we hang out or whatever, and you're like, "Oh, let's do this," I'm like, "All right, cool." If it sucks, I'm just gonna go to bed, which is a good option. Like I'm okay with that option. 
That's why. That's why we do everything at your house. Oh yeah, no, I, I just it. go to bed. Yeah, you're like we gotta be near my bed so that I can have an option. Yeah, I, hey, dude, I I don't. I'm sure there are people that my wife has over or that we have over that think I'm a dick <laughs> or, or a narcoleptic. Yeah, because I will. I'm just like, all right. Narcolepsy is the one where you fall asleep, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't care if they leave the house. I'm just. I'm just going to bed. It could be it could be fucking nine o'clock. Yes, could be two in the morning. But whenever I'm going, I just I just go. I don't ask. <laughs> you don't even really always announce it. Sometimes you get up and I'm like, oh, just going to the bathroom. <laughs> you just never come back. Yeah, going to bed, dude. Sorry. I'm, I'm glad so far you haven't done that during the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, keep waiting for that to happen during the show. Like you just get up, and walk out. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't walk out. Like. Sometimes you'll be talking about a subject. I completely check out. Oh. <laughs> completely. I don't – I'm not really thinking about anything. And then sometimes sometimes while I'm checked out and you're, you're, you're going. Right. Like anytime there's a segment of you talking for a minute and there's no, mm-hmm, yeah, but I've no fucking clue what you're saying. You've logged out. Yeah, I've just completely checked out. And, and then sometimes I have the thought, I've really checked out. I have no idea what he's saying. And I'm like, okay, I just got to get – whenever he stops – talking i got to be ready to say something and half the time i don't know if it is even remotely related to what you said but i know we can edit so it doesn't matter that's the beauty of doing this is that we can chop it up and when it when in doubt when there's not a segue we can just play one of those little sound effects yeah (laughs) and oddly enough that gets played a lot while i'm talking it, it's it makes for a great transition when there's really no reason like yeah because I don't because no, <laughs> I stop listening. <laughs> All of a sudden you're like you know what I hate about the grocery store and you're like we were, we were talking about you know voting rights <laughs> oh yeah you know what I hate about the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> um we were talking about Avril Lavigne fucking slag Avril <laughs> you jackass oh. Two to nothing, motherfucker! Ding, ding, ding. We don't have proof that she's a whore, though. That was rude. She I don't think. I don't think. Promiscuous. Dude, dude. I don't think slag is a term of endearment. No, I agree. Like, when else are you going to use it besides to be rude? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. All right, Avril Lavigne and her Nickelback fella. It got me thinking about music bands. Let's do an. Uh, who are these guys? All right. Were you ever a groupie? Do you have a band? Were you were you the guy with the band? Not necessarily a groupie, but like, did you work the door for for somebody a lot? Was your roommate a you know the guitarist for somebody? What a very specific. I don't think that's it, that specific. Really? In college, I feel like everybody knows a band. Oh, don't get me wrong. I know a band. Well, okay. Well, who's your band? That's what I'm saying. Who's uh, your band? The guy, who's the band look, that you you got the CD before like 10 other people had the CD? Is it like a for real band or like a local band? Yeah, I'm not saying they have to have ever made it. No. Oh. It's a but wasn't that I okay. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you the one I was thinking about. I my freshman year here, uh I had met a guy like one of the times I'd come to campus to um hang out before school even started. He hit it off. He was really funny. We had a lot of the same like sensibilities as far as humor goes. When I got to school, I looked him up or whatever, gave him a call. This is back in the days before you could text or send an email or anything like that. I mean, you could send an email, but who the fuck had email addresses of the people they knew? By the way, that reminds me, I have a uh, Man Scout badge we'll talk about later. Nice. That that will click into. It's it's such a weird thing when you go back and think about having to reach out to somebody for the first time and do so by actually calling them. It it's seems awkward. so yeah, it seems so intimate now when you actually call somebody. And, and it is. Yeah. To so for that to be the first interaction with somebody really is uh, it, was, it was a very strange thing. It was all a huge barrier. Uh, to, it, the internet and social media and stuff have have ruined the word friend. Fucking butchered the word friend. Well, it's sad. We should have we should have a funeral. We should have a little burial for the word friend. For the word friend. I don't know that. And it'd be appropriate if no one showed up. <laughs> what it what it what it's done is it's turned, it's changed best friend. Like when when you say best friend, you really need to name like you know six or seven people because no, those I are don't. people that you go no. see. No, I have I have friends. Right. I have a best friend, and because then I have acquaintances. Yeah, but that's because you don't exist online. Like. Like fucking like Facebook should have. Oh, I have 
seven thousand acquaintances, right? Three friends and my mom. <laughs> you know, right? Well, they do now have close friends. You can mark people. No, as close friends. they don't. Yes, they do. What a bunch of. Then why fucking? Ha- it's irritating. No, man. All they've done is tried to adopt. They've tried to digitize the stratification of of relationships that we do in real life. Hey, we're getting off the point. But anyway, so I called this guy up. I'd written his phone number down. Called him up early. Had in a the pin, quarter did you? Or whatever. I did way back in the day. Yeah. Called him up on my fucking dorm phone. I didn't even have a cell phone at this time. So anyway, he he's like he gives me his. Did address. You have to dial nine to get out. I did. I did. That was that far. Yeah, it was that far back. You had to dial something to get out of to get out of campus. He gives me his address. He's like, "Hey, awesome, cool, man. Yeah, we're having this party on Friday night. Why don't you come over to the place? Uh, I live with my bandmates." I thought this was the coolest thing that had ever happened to me at this time. Uh, these guys were all older. He was like five, six years older than me. He was supposed to be a senior, even though he wasn't about to graduate. The band guys weren't as old. His other bandmates weren't as old as he was, but I knew they were older than me which meant there was going to be lots of alcohol at the party. And they were in a fucking band in college. How cool could that be? You know, I, here I was a freshman. I was 17 years old. It was awesome. It was so amazing. So be, be honest. Were they any good? No, 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 no. Oh. They're in a band older than me. There's going to be alcohol. That wasn't your first fucking thought. Yeah, there's going to be girls. Yeah. Why don't you just say that? Yeah. Well, I don't know. If I, if I could tell you were lying, the listeners could tell that you were lying. And I think you cheapened... I cheapen that moment. Cheapen that moment for them. Uh, I apologize. I apologize. And everybody yeah, thinks were, I'm the asshole. Uh, what did take your listeners for granted, jerk? Point in fact, there were only like three girls there, two of which were girlfriends, and the other one was a setup for one of the bandmates. So there weren't any girls for me there, as it turned out. It Didn't mean alcohol. that wasn't your expectations. No, that's true. Yeah, no, my expectations were, were that there would be many, many groupies at this at this little soiree. It was a small thing. It was just a handful of their friends. But I had a blast. I got to know all the guys in the band. And and what ended up happening is like they, I'd work the door for them a lot when we would when they would go in and work around here locally, and they did in all over who, the. Who who is it? Lennon. Did you ever see them? L i n e n. No, never heard of them. Uh, their posters were fucking funny, man. It was like, you know, 10% rayon, 25% cotton, uh, 75% whatever the fuck Rick is. Uh, Rick was the, like the drummer. And and Lennon didn't last. Like the the lead singer and the uh, and the bass guitarist moved to Austin like the next year, oh, year right. and a half or something like that. But, you know, for like nine months. Like they'd play all over the area and I'd go work the door for them, make a little money, get to drink for free. You know. Do you ever scam any money since you're working the door? No, fuck no, man. I those guys. I thought they were. First off, I thought they were brilliant musicians, and they were okay. What a waste. You know, but if I'm working the door, I'm getting some beers, I'm pocketing a couple of twenties, and I'm slapping some chicks on the ass. Then I'm going to pass out. Oh no, I definitely slapped some chicks on the ass, and and I and I I got more than my fair share of alcohol out of the gig. I got I got drunk for like nine months. Almost exclusively on the bar tab. Um, so uh, the musician that I know is actually still playing music is really, really good. We grew up, what's funny is we grew up neighbors in like grade school and like played like little league football together, right? Right. Then I moved off and went to another school, moved back to my hometown. Right. He had moved, ended up being his fucking neighbor again, man. <laughs> It's karma, dude. Uh, yeah, we had yeah Circling. we right right across it. We had a lot of good times. Uh, we'd pull pranks on each other. Like I would uh, tarball him. No, no, no. I didn't know what that was <laughs> yet. But I, I, I did. I would pee in like a uh, like a coke bottle or something. And uh, I knew for school he would always go out the back door and get in his truck. So I would set the bottle of pee on the on the back door. So when he opened the screen door, it knock it would knock <laughs> the piss bottle over, and he'd have to fucking walk through it. And then he'd have to have the decision of, fuck, do I go in and change shoes or do I go to school with my feet smelling smell like, like piss? piss? Yeah. You're a hateful bastard. Dude, that's fun. Come on, that's funny. It's a little funny, like the first time. I'm assuming yeah. I did that to him a couple of times. Oh, no, I did it I did it once. He learned the second time, went around the front door, took the bottle of pee from his door and put it on mine. Oh, nice. So he got me back. And then we collaborated and collected urine for like a fucking month. That's not something to be proud of. And then and then went and and senior prank day at school, we'd had like fucking forty bottles of piss that when every we got to school late, so when everybody shut their doors, 
we put a bottle in front of all all the teachers' doors, so when they opened it, piss just fucking spilled in all the hallways. Oh my god, man! You didn't get in trouble for that? No, it's not fucking CIS Miami. They're not going to DNA test my urine. They don't fucking know whose urine it was. Oh, they just didn't. So, but see, okay, the school I went to though, like there literally would have been waterboarding trials <laughs> <laughs> whose <laughs> urine is this yes yes like they would have they would have ferreted out the information would, dude if if you had done it it <laughs> would have been all diet it. coke bottles and it would be real fucking easy to follow the, the not in high school i didn't drink diet coke right. in high school i drank regular coke and remember i was fatty mcnofly in high school <laughs> and anyway so back to uh yeah this uh you're, the, you're the never mind musician. yeah yeah uh adam dale real cool guy really cool guy uh, plays amazing music. We'll feature some of his music sometime. Uh, Lennon's going on this episode. Uh, he was so also you know. in. Uh, he was also in a band who still who still plays. And they get together. Uh, American Tragedy. Oh yeah. What really? Yeah, yeah. He's the lead singer for American Tragedy. Oh okay. Yeah. So we grew up together. Had lots of funny singing at my wedding. Oh wow. Uh, you know, I just got him drunk. <laughs> gave him a place to stay. Pretty much did it for free. <laughs> You're like. I'll give you a woman in a warm bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the whiskey Come you can have. Drive, drive up here and play at my wedding. Like, I will sing for your woman in whiskey. Uh, no, but he does. Even even in high school. I mean, he was writing his own stuff in high school. Put out a demo tape in high school. Just did a, a really good job. An amazing guitar player. I can't say enough good things about right. this dude. So here's the question that really matters. Did the music ever get you booty? Me knowing him? Yeah. Uh, here, I, think here's, I think here's where you and I are going to differ. All right. I didn't need the music to get booty. <laughs> so. All right. Like, I love Adam to death. Right. We weren't friends because he was a musician. Right. Like, we grew up together. He, we were just friends. So, no, I would never, I never used that or or try to abuse that friendship in that way. So, you're, so you're telling me it was it was wrong to pull the. I'm with the band card. No, because you didn't know those guys until, <laughs> until like you were in college. Yeah. Like I've known this dude my whole life. Like <laughs> so it was totally all right. Uh, we'll have links for Lennon and for Adam Dale. Yeah, and American Tragedy. We'll have yeah. links uh, for all of those. Dude, on- his solo stuff. Uh, he wants, I think, so badly to be in a band. Like I think that's just been a dream of his. I like his solo stuff st- better. Yeah, singer songwriter stuff. I like I like way better because I feel like that's all. Everything that's coming out on that is him. Right. But in a band, you have to take influences from everyone else. And it's a collaborative process or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They have great songs. I just don't always care for the process. Cool. Twoguysonepod.com for all the links there. And don't forget, you can purchase that music and um, other music that we've played previously on the podcast, The Peakers and uh, people like Bradley Bridges, all that stuff you can buy through Amazon and support us. Give us a little chump change. It doesn't cost you anything, uh, but Amazon will kick back some commission for Two Guys, One Pod uh, for sending you their way. Because, you know, until you heard this podcast, you'd never heard of Amazon.com. They're a nice little online bookseller. I buy everything from Amazon. Uh, I ordered toilet paper. And you did not. I You're did full too. of – you did not I order swear to God, paper not recently. I have bought toilet Why? paper before from Amazon.com. Why? If you really – if you really needed it. I didn't need it right then. They had a special for a while, and I was trying out. They do this subscribe and save thing where you can, like, order groceries and tell them, hey, you know, every four weeks send me this, every every six weeks send me this or whatever, and you get a subscription rate on those goods. It's pretty fucking cool, man. You can get toothpaste or, like, deodorant or razors or cereal. Fuck that. Whatever, man. I'm saving car trips. There's some stuff I'm just not going to buy online. Toothpaste and pussy, really. <laughs> not buying those online. What about lube? Where's, what's your stance on lube? Not going to. I don't. I've never used it. <laughs> Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> not now. Not never. <laughs> if I got to use lube, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> That's pretty fucking funny. This is that's, it's two guys, one pod after hours. It's a, it's a drunk show, man. I told you, I'm getting. That's all right. Getting, I'm getting lubricated. All right. Oh, I have a man scout. All right. 
have two Man Scout badges, kind of go hand in hand. The first Man Scout badge All right. is your, your camping badge. Yes, of course. A tent. Uh, no, no, no. It has more to do with, with like the primitive nature of camping. Okay. Right? If you end up at a girl's house. All right. Okay. And you used zero social media, zero cell phone at all. All real world contact. All real world contact. And you end up staying with a female. You're camping, man. You've got your camping badge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went camping. Uh, That's so, tough. I don't know anybody who's done it in now, years. You wouldn't have to do it all in one go. No. Although you're more likely to complete it if you do it all in I mean, one go. I mean, I imagine. It, yeah. I mean, if you if you go camping, you I mean you got to do things to prepare, right? You got to pack this, pack that, do this, do that. Same same thing. I mean, you got to. So maybe you know her from work. Maybe you know her from school, but you never get the digits. Yeah. You never friend her on Facebook. Yeah. And it's, then one night. It's tough, you man. Put it all together under the stars. Yeah, get that camping badge. I don't. I don't know I, any of my single friends who've done it in years. I've never done it. Really? Ever? Uh, well, I mean, if you go back to high school, oh, that counts. Sure. Oh, but in high school, I never stayed at her house. There you go. Doesn't count. Disqualified. There Didn't you go. go camping. So no, I've never. I've never been camping by those terms. I'm still without my camping badge. And if, if a honey bun has anything to do with you'll it, be, I always stay. will be. That's right. <laughs> badge you'll never get. Uh, so another Man Scout badge is backpacking. <sighs> and backpacking is... Let's pause right here. I want to interject. Sometimes this moment, right before you tell me what it is, when my mind is literally thinking of all of the things that it could be, it's almost better than the badge. Not always, when you when yours is better than the than the four or five that I could come up with very quickly, it's always so much better. So what what do you what would you what would you? Say I haven't thought any because oh. I was because I was I was talking about this instead. Backpacking is so I think backpacking is when the person you're seeing lives so far away that to drive there you have to stop and get gas when you got a trek. To do it, you're backpacking. How's your relationship with Tiffany going? Well, we've been backpacking for three months now. Yeah, there you go. It's rough. Yeah. Times are hard. Gas is expensive. Yeah. I'm not sure that she's worth it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once you, I mean, sometimes woman, sometimes you go backpacking because everybody tells you this view's great, you get there and the view sucks. You only take a special woman backpacking. Yeah. Have you ever backpacked? No. You've you've never long distance relationships so far that you have to fill up on gas between. Mm. I've been in a, I've been in a relationship to where doing like it's a three year relationship or yeah. whatever to where she had a gig here and For, I had a gig like she had a gig in another state I had a gig in another state and I've had to fly to see them. Uh, okay. But we'd okay. been dating for a couple of years at that point, right? But that was one time, and even then, like you, like you took a vacation to see her. Oh yeah, and then right afterwards we broke up. Like <sighs> literally, I got off the plane back in that state, and then there was a conversation. Mm, we're we're over with. That's done thing now. Yeah, uh, maybe that's why I hate flying. You know, I had a really terrible. The last time that I flew, I had a really terrible. Not the last time. Time before last that I flew. I had a really terrible incident, like, in the hour before I got on the plane. And I've I've not felt the same about flights since then either. It's bad juju. Gets God punishing you. <laughs> if you wanted to just fly, I'd give us wings. <laughs> I disagree. I don't think there's anything inherently evil about air travel. I'm just, just saying shitty things happen when a dude's got to fly sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I've never backpacked either. I am really not a long term. I mean, a long distance. I'm not a long term date. I have a friend that not a long distance relationship. I have person. a friend that almost exclusively backpacks. <laughs> Why? Because he I, likes his privacy. Like he's like, I want her over uh, there. No, no, no. I mean, it could, if 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 you live in a small town, right? Right. And you have a certain status in that town. I mean, you can't be seen sleeping around. So you have to go to another town. You can't be seen sleeping around. Why you got to be seen? 
Did y'all put on my Daredevil outfit and get sonar on it? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I haven't had a whole lot of success just meeting a person on the street and being like, hey, what's your address? I'll meet you at 7. Let's bang. <laughs> no, but you keep that shit on the hush-hush, on the QT, on the DL. You don't have to be loud about it. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Some of this is going to cut, too. <laughs> um, so you're saying... You're saying he just he dates in other towns just so that he doesn't have to see those women again? In case it goes badly, yes, so he doesn't have to see them again. Huh. I just don't like I don't I never cared enough to backpack. <laughs> like I've had people backpack to me. Oh really? Yeah. I've never <laughs> backpacked to them. You you're saying does that mean that you get some uh does that mean that you get the tourist attraction badge? <laughs> Oh man, if that's a bad hell yeah, that's an awesome badge. The landmark badge, baby. Yeah, you, you're the fucking people backpack to you. The, the the national park landmark. Yeah, so I don't have my backpacking badge. Got my landmark badge. You got your landmark badge. A seven, the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Running the finger down the grid. There we go. Oh man. Um. All right, I think that about wraps it up. I'm um, spent. <laughs> <laughs> all over the desk too we're gonna have to get out the wet wipes it's terrible oh <laughs> uh, i'm one guy and i'm the other and this has been the podcast <laughs>